views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. Each week, you'll learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness and explore the deeper knowledge within. Welcome home. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Neff. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Kelly Neff, and you are listening to Lucid Planet Radio on Transformation Talk Radio, CRN Digital Talk and Affiliates, and WBLQ 1230 AM, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New York. Stay with us for the next hour and let us help you experience healing, inspiration, and a sense of calm. Every week on Lucid Planet Radio, we will have some of the most gifted scientists, healers, speakers, and authors helping you to become the greatest version of yourself. You can find out more at thelucidplanet.com. Stream all of our podcasts for free on lucidplanetradio.com, as well as on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Stitcher, etc. Just search for Lucid Planet Radio and also connect with me on Facebook and Twitter at the Lucid Planet with Dr. Kelly and new. I am now on Instagram so you can follow the weird and wonderful adventures of my life at the Lucid Planet. Um, I'm also really pleased to announce that this is our 60th episode of the show today. Wow. Honestly, can't even believe it. Um, Since I started this show last year, You know, we're now on Sierra and digital talk that brings us to over 11 million homes in the U.S. and over 100 countries. It is literally kind of like a dream that has been manifested. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be here and for everybody's support. Um, You can find out on our website, again, the Lucid Planet how to nominate yourself or someone else to come on the show, how to listen live in your area, no matter where you are in the world, and also how to become an advertising or sponsorship partner. I also have some big news coming up for 2017. So stay tuned for that. Um, I mentioned earlier, you know, that it's today's show really has a lot to do with calm. And part of that is because the summer is kind of over. We've had Labor Day. I can't even believe it. School's back in session. All the things are happening. You know, there's leaves on the ground. Um, And before we know it, it's going to be the holidays again. And it's going to be stressful. And, you know, there's competition and social comparison and family time, blah. So with that in mind, today's show really is about inner peace, including yoga and meditation and gatherings that bring people together surrounding this. And I'm really excited to welcome my guest, Jay (laughs) Chadagam, I'm going to get it right today, um, who has really been blazing the trail for bringing messages of peace and calm and meditation to the world. Um, If you haven't seen his TEDx talk from 2013 on being before doing, it is so lovely. I can't recommend it enough. Um, I watched it again right before the show, and I literally feel more calm just from these little micro meditations that are embedded in the talk. So it's really wonderful. You can find that, of course, on YouTube. Um, Now, a little bit about Jay. While he was getting his master's in engineering at the University of Texas at Austin, he came to the realization that a life of fulfillment trumps a life of achievement. And since then, he has been a massive proponent of meditation, of training people to do kind of to be before they do at workplaces, schools, and hospitals. Um, And he's done all kinds of events, including Peace in the Park, which is actually coming up next weekend in San Francisco. And we're going to talk all about um, what is Peace in the Park. It's really an opportunity to find yourself, feel good, and engage with the community. And this is something that we need to see more people unifying around positivity and togetherness and calm rather than, you know, like raging or people unifying over angry political stuff. That's all good, too. But really, this is the idea of, like, let's bring ourselves together for peace. So on that note, Jay Chattagam, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks for having me here. 
It's great to have you here. Um, I guess a good place to start is, you know, tell us a little bit about yourselves. I know you're originally from India um, and now you live uh, in the Bay Area. How have your different cultural experiences kind of inspired your trajectory? That's a great starting point for this conversation. So interestingly, I grew up in India uh, first um, 22 years of my life. And I was really never a meditator, never was really never called to doing things like that. I was more into sports and rock and roll music, uh, fast bikes and things like that. And, you know, interestingly, I grew up at a time when the cable television was just coming into India. And a lot of our exposure was to the production of TV shows that happened right here in California. And so just subconsciously, I was groomed in a way to want to live the American lifestyle, American dream, if you will. And funny enough that, you know, so I do end up coming to America and I go to grad school here. And like you mentioned, I was in Austin. And within a year, I was asking myself, you know what, I think I've gotten to the place that I was wanting to, but is this really happiness for me? And there was a big silence, there was a big vacuum, and I, I didn't really have an answer to what is it if, if it's not this material pursuit of stuff and all of this, you know, the fun and the pomp and the show of the external world. I said, what is it that would really be fulfilling? And then I had to go back to India mm. and find, uh, ground myself, find my rooting practice, if you will, and uh, came back having learned meditation and uh, there's been no looking back. And this is back in... Uh, around 99 mm. and uh, been, you know, very deeply involved with this and coming from Austin to San Francisco is like, I sit, to, <clears throat> I tell my friends, it's like, you know, now imagine if you had to plot a chart, Austin is a miniature version is a very progressive, very mm. sp- you know, young people, very um, hipster. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, it's kind of a hipster community. Exactly. Right. I mean, keep Austin weird was our slogan. Yeah. Now San Francisco is like more of all of that. If you can totally. Imagine, right. Totally. So, so I feel it's like, you know, it's like the universe is propelling me in this direction and I'm a, I'm an engineer and being a computer engineer, I came here to Silicon Valley to work in the tech industry. So one half of my brain is on the technology side. The other part of it is on the spiritual science So I feel like, you know, the universe has brought me to a place where it's just the perfect um, combination where I'm able to exercise both my technical and my spiritual uh, aspects. And, you know, uh, it's just a great place to be. So it's it's been quite a journey, but I feel like I've landed in the right spot. I love that. And actually, it does. It sounds like harmony in a lot of ways, because we are complex, dynamic beings. And so we have both sides. There is that technical side. And then there also is that more esoteric, metaphysical, free side that kind of liberates you from the technical side. And I feel like creatively, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but did does one feed the other for you? Oh, by the way, Jay, we're, we're taking a break in a couple of minutes, but I'm really curious, is does working in tech influence you as a spiritual meditative person? And does being a meditative spiritual person influence you working in tech? You know, I I would imagine that, for, so it's different for different people. But for me, certainly, um, I need my stimulation. I need my data, right? Anything, for yeah. example, even finding facts about how um, pertinent and how valuable meditation is. I need to see the data to believe it. (laughs) And I know that, you know, for an artist or for somebody who's really a right brain person, that's not important. So for me, so the two things really make up the complete uh, person that I am. So understanding the data, understanding how things work, understanding the wiring of the brain, but at the same time being able to understand, you know, how does, you know, the importance of slowing down and just looking at the big picture, you know, looking at the forest, as they say, uh, becoming really still and saying, what is the point of all of this? And how can the technological in, in innovation and advancement actually propel us to grow and to improve and be a happier human race and not just for the sake of creating more technology for just for making, you know, just another release? Mm, I love that. I, and I, I feel, I feel re- very resonant with that as well. I was a, a, a trained PhD, you know, research psychologist, and I worked in the health field. And then I discovered meditation during a 
very tumultuous time in my life, my Saturn return. And, you know, you believe that as a hard worker, you're supposed to think really fast and kind of be out of control with like, you never stop and never sleep and you keep working, but actually learning to slow down that, that tool is an unbelievably valuable. And, um, it's definitely something that I'm always working on too, because I feel like sometimes we forget, you know, we, we know how to meditate or we're afraid to even start. Um, and when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to start a meditation process, um, you know, procedures, what is that like and, and how it's actually not as intense as you think. And also Jay Chattagam and I are going to talk about peace in the park in San Francisco, which is taking place next weekend. So we'll see you guys in a couple minutes. Stick with us. Brand consultant and coach Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're a person with a dream and unsure where to start or a CEO of a successful company wondering what's next, Jen Morgan and the RAD Method empowers you to play to your strengths and focus your competitive edge so you can show up in the world as your most powerful brand. Go to JenMorgan.com or call 206-972-5366. Song of the Heart, Walking the Path of Light, from author and healer Francine Vale is available now. Through Francine's life story, we learn how imperative it is to love one another. Once this simple truth is learned, peace on earth will prevail. Song of the Heart is a life lived and a story told for this purpose. To learn more about Francine and her amazing gifts, or to order your copy of the book today, visit angelsandlightbeings.com. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving, even in the face of adversity. Say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. 1230 WBLQ. Hello, we are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and my guest today is Jay Chadagam, who's talking with us about yoga, meditation, spirituality, and also the amazing event, Peace in the Park, which is in San Francisco exactly 10 days from today. Um, Jay, I want to make sure that everybody knows how to contact you and how to find out more about your talks, your workshops, and of course, your events like Peace in the Park. Yeah, sure. So, you know, just Googling my name, that's, I think everybody does that. I mean, people don't really, I have a website, uh, being before doing the US, I think people's, it's hard for remembering that. Just Google my name, Jay Chodagam, Google the, the topic you just mentioned, being before doing. Uh, Peace in the Park is a good way. Peace in the Park is a, is a global phenomenon now. 
So you might find a number of different sites, but I'm the one who uh, chairs the event in San Francisco. So maybe Peace in the Park SF, if you want to Google it, the website is peaceinthepark.sf.org. And yeah, so that's great ways to find me. I've got a blog that you can um, you can go read some of my articles, and there's, there'll be a way to contact me from there. Facebook again, Jay Chodagam is Facebook slash Jay Chodagam uh, is or, uh, or uh, Facebook slash Peace in the Park SF. So all these different ways to find me. Yes, and if, there is an event page too on Facebook. Right. For Peace in the Park. Um, I, I'm really curious how, Jay, what what led, how did this event come to be what it is today? Right. So the story goes back in 2012. I was invited to an event, uh, to a conference in Portugal, and I was uh, traveling after the event and I ended up in England to visit some friends. And I came across Peace in the Park that was being held by some of my friends in Oxford. And I totally fell in love with it. Um, I came back to America and I came back, you know, San Francisco is the haven of peace activism. You know, the United yes. Nations started here, the, a lot of the anti-war movements and, you know, things like that. And so this iconic place as it is, I asked myself, where is our peace and happiness festival that does not involve a lot of drugs, alcohol and loud music? I mean, just yes. peace celebrated as, as what it is meant to be. Yes. And there were absolutely zero so a bunch of us friends got together and we said, you know, we'll just do it ourselves. And so I have friends in the community who are yoga teachers, Tai Chi masters, artists, musicians, dancers, storytellers, what have you. So the first year, this was 2013, I believe, we did the first one and put on a show. 2,000 people showed up at Golden Gate Park and we said, wow, this is wow. amazing. And then we had kids come up to us at the end. I still have a recording, a, a testimony of one of those little girls who said, I want to see this piece in the park happen for my children and my grandchildren. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so, you know, and some moms, even, you know, so we had people ask us after that, they said, you know, are you going to continue this? We can't stop this. And we said, oh, you know, let's look at it. Let's go back to the drawing board. And so we put together a program, which is now, we believe it or not, four years um, and running. And um, yeah, this seems like it's an event that uh, is here to live and continue. Absolutely. Well, and it sounds like it's grown a lot just in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, so that's part of it is the organic nature in which we organize these. We, we produce this event. We don't have a big budget. It's a free event. So we go off of, you know, some sponsorship, some a lot of private donations from people who love the concept. And so what we do is that we don't have a big marketing push in terms of a, a you know, commercial marketing um, budget. So it's a lot of it is word of mouth. So let's say a person came and found out about it. Next time they're going to go bring two of their relatives or friends or neighbors. And so that number is sort of organically doubling year after year. So that's why it is. Yeah, just, we're seeing a steady growth here. We're very grateful for that. Yeah. Well, and what it sounds like, it's not like you're trying to book these big headliners, right? And pay people a bunch of money to like draw people in. It's more that you're bringing people together because of the energy of what's behind it. That's right. And that's a very good point. I'm, I'm glad you noticed that. Yeah. So I'll tell you a little um, personal favorite of mine. So every year at the park, I just wear a regular T-shirt like any other volunteer. And I walk around the park and I just randomly, you know, sit next to people and ask them, hey, how did you find out about this event? And they'll say, you know, somehow they came across the park or they've started a flyer or a friend or something. And the next question I ask them is, what was the most special thing about was what was the thing that one thing that drew you the most at the festival? Mm. nine out of 10 people usually tell me it's about the energy. It's not about, like you just said, not about that headliner, not about that musician or that great talk or that you yeah. know activity. It's about just the energy. So everything is more or less equal. Mm. And that's part of what we are very, um, very conscious about to, to keep that, to curate that the content that it's not like it's being stolen by any one headliner. Um, and, and also the other part of it is that we want to make sure that we we cater to all age groups, all um, all types of minds. For example, for me, meditation works, but for my sister, maybe it's music. For my mother, it's yoga. Yes. You know, so even with our one family, we all come to peace from different avenues, from different sort of uh, uh, windows, if you will. And oh, so, yeah, I love that. So right. there's not this dogma of like, this is how you have to do it to do it right. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. Because we know there's different types. So, you know, there's just different uh, energy levels and mindsets. And But the idea is that every year we keep increasing the portfolio of offerings such that we're able to make it, hopefully at one point, an all-encompassing one-stop shop. You'll be able to find whatever it is that is going to be your calling to peace. It's at peace in the park. I love that. And, you know, I also really enjoy the idea that there's such an intention behind it. It's a community grassroots feeling and something that we're kind of missing or we're, we're trying to get back to in the society. Like every mass, like I was saying in the intro, I'm really interested in the way that transformational culture can shape people's psychology and can be healing and can change the world. And we're seeing a lot of people gathering for like reasons of partying or reasons of like political assembly. And this really has a different feel to it. And do you think that this is something that's going to expand to other cities? It, it is. As we speak yesterday, just, you know, case in point, I got an email from a friend. I didn't even realize they were working on it. Augusta, Georgia, where the, you know, the PGA Masters is held. So yeah. they're having their first piece in the park two weeks after our, ours. First nice. of all. Nice. Yeah. So and uh, I was there in Trinidad a couple of months ago, July. And they had their first piece in the park in the Caribbean. So I was there to help them to launch that. Uh, Vancouver, uh, sorry, Toronto in Canada just had theirs a couple of months ago. Oxford, England, where I, you know, this is their fifth or sixth time, I think. They did it um, just a couple of weeks ago again. So it's Amsterdam and Miami and New York City Central Park and Bali, Indonesia has been calling me. Madrid, Spain wants to do it. So, yeah, absolutely. This is a phenomenon that I think is just growing. And that's what we want to see. We want to be able to, uh, you'd mentioned about TEDx a little while ago. So yes. we want to embody that same principle where we're not trying to control. We're just going to give people the know-how, set some sort of guidelines. And we want this to really sprawl across the globe. And one of our mission statements is we want to have every park become a canvas for peace. Oh, my gosh. Well, we should definitely talk when we're off the air about Denver, because that's where I'm at. And I'm sure that there would be a lot of people who would want to get involved in that, too. So and and, and it, this is a free event, right? It's free and, and everybody's a volunteer. Everybody's a volunteer. And I tell you, you know, just even the some of the speakers who fly into town. I mean, we've got Dr. Dan Siegel, who is one of the greatest awesome. minds on the planet for uh, neuroscience. And he's a, you know, sort of, much sought after guy and, you know, his eight New York Times bestseller books. And he flies and not only does he not, you know, charge anything for speaking, but he even flies in on his own, you know, money. Um, just very grateful. People who have seen the, the purpose and the mission behind it, um, they get right into it. And, yeah, we have I just I was meeting with my volunteer coordinator this morning. We have 150 volunteers lined up to go on September 17th. Wow. That's incredible. And you can, again, find out more online and check it out in San Francisco, as well as all over the world. Keep an eye out. Denver next year. <laughs> yeah, uh, so out. what is the what, what is the take home message? Like, what is your intention that people come and they they gather together? And what is your intention for how they feel when they leave? So it's it's a few different things. And I think you touched on one of those things. It's about the community building aspect and. So we try to do um, an event where people are looking for that tribe. And I think you, you hit it right on the head when you said it's not about partying. It's not about just going crazy, you know, going away somewhere far away and just kind of letting it loose. We want to integrate that with life, into the community, with the, our lifestyles and our families and so on and so forth. So we um, one of the things that we see that is this is a year long community that we, that we hang out and we, we co-create events. And we complement each other's, you know, talents and skills to be able to produce the events throughout the year. So the tribe is one part. The second thing is for people who are absolutely unable to deal with the modern way of, you know, stressors, you know, things that, were, that are, didn't exist 20 years ago. You know, young people, you know, are complaining about ADHD and ADD, things like, you know, ADD and ADHD did not exist in the, yeah. in the doctor's menu, even till as recent as 15 years ago. Right. And this has become a commonplace thing now. And so, unfortunately, when you don't have positive ways to deal with stress, you resort to things that are, you know, either self-abuse or abusing something else outside of that person or, or the nature or what have you. So our intention here is, you know, there are all these amazing techniques right here in the community. And we try to bring out the best of the breed of these 
uh, different uh, modalities for finding your calling to peace. And we want to share that with people. And we are hoping that if, if one person comes in that day and finds something that's going to change the trajectory of their life and say, okay, you know what, now I can go live more in harmony with my family, with myself, with mother nature, that for us is mission accomplished. You make so many good points that I want to address. And really the most, the tribe, the community is so important. And the second thing about being able to self-soothe in a chaotic, painful, crazy world. Uh, I mean, it's only natural that we have dysfunctions and are mentally ill and have adjustment issues because of everything that we go through. This is a crazy society. It's not natural. Like we talked about in your TED Talk, like if I go live in the mountains in a monastery, I'm going to be pretty chill. <laughs> right. So the fact that this is actually trying to empower people with skills that they can use in their lives to be happier, that's amazing. And um, we're going to talk more when we come back from the break, Jay Chowdagam and I, about Peace in the Park and also more about what these skills are and how they work for you, meditation, yoga, breathwork, et cetera. So I'm Dr. Kelly. You're listening to Lucid Planet Radio. Stay with us and we will be right back. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving, even in the face of adversity. Say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Ari Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Ari has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on Facebook. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pat. I am so thrilled. I've had the honor of working with Leslie Fontaine for the past year or so. And what she has created in her hit program, Sheer Alchemy, transcends what most of us get to listen to or hear in any point in time in our lives. But beyond that, Leslie is working with people all over the world and she has created something phenomenal based on the feedback and input from the Archangels from the Ascended Masters, from the Light Beings, and most importantly, from each and every one of you. So if you want to change your life, if you're ready to step into your own version of Sheer Alchemy, please give Leslie a call at 678-665-3366. And why? Because this is what you're going to be prepared to do. Be amazed, and on your part, connect with the Ascended Masters that are there to help you custom make the life that you are meant to live. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and I have Jay Chowdagam here talking with me about the event Peace in the Park, which is in 10 days from now, as well as meditation, yoga, inspiration, and tools just for wellness. And um, Jay, th this has been such a great talk. Um, I want to talk about meditation. Now, you say in your TED Talk how the monks and the you know ancients 
and maybe even the current, uh, you know, members of kind of the more esoteric Eastern traditions would say that it's as important as eating and sleeping and breathing is meditation. Um, why do humans need meditation? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I like, I like this, the way you frame that question. So first you talked about the monks and then you said, um, you know, the need for meditation. So I really believe, I <laughs> am totally convinced that the monks from those thousands of years ago who invented, who came up with this idea of meditation, did that for us today Meditation is more pertinent to mankind today than it was even 50 years ago. And yes. I think you said that a little while ago. Just the craziness, the brain has not evolved fast enough to be able to deal with all the stimulation that we're exposed to mm. on a daily basis. And if we don't learn to quiet ourselves, it's just not possible. So there's a, there's a saying, there is a uh, mention in the WHO report that by the year, I think, 2025, one out of every four people will have some sort of a psychosomatic condition. Mm. Right? So, so, so that's a, pretty, that's a yeah. pretty large number there. So, and the reason is that we have learned to adopt technology and consume data, and we're doing it like never before in, on the planet, but we have not learned how to slow down. So I say that we're almost burning the candle on both sides. Totally. Sleep, for example, right? So we, as human race, everybody on a daily basis knows or, or resorts to one form of detoxing or unwinding, which is sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have computers, iPads, and TVs that are encroaching into the bedroom, and so they're staying up longer watching these, TV, you know, being yeah. you know, stimulated by, these, by technology, and then during the day, we're already bombarded with technology, that is a recipe for disaster. So as um, and I want to sound like uh, you know uh, ap apocalyptic, but it, <laughs> you're fine. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is, you know, this is uh, you know meditations. I say today it's an absolute necessity. It used to be one of those fancy things that you know, the, like you said, the esoteric people did up in the mountains a few years ago. But today we need it. And I tell you, this is my prognosis: is that in a couple of years. They will be meditation will be where yoga is today, where every city corner in no matter whether it's a red state or a blue state, whether you believe in it or not, don't believe it, it's going to, you know, we have yoga today. So meditation is going to get to that point. We will need it. And doctors are already, I have people, psychiatrists are recommending patients to me and I do retreats. I do silence retreats and, and half of them come because some neurologists, psychiatrists are psychotherapist has recommended those people to to come to the silence retreat so it's already happening oh man it's funny my my partner uh james who's a regular jimmy ohm he's regularly on the show but he was just telling me yesterday he was like i need a silence retreat i was like i know it's it's the the, the summer and how intense everything is and just like so much stimulation and talking and uh, sometimes it it's just so nice even a, a couple hours of silence even 20 minutes Right. is enough sometimes. And so I guess my question for you is, um, how do people, and, and I'm sure you get this a lot, probably these people that are recommended to you who need the help, they've never meditated before. And right. I was one of those people too, who was like, I can't meditate. I think too quickly. I don't want to relax like that. I don't like my thoughts. You know, all these, these things we say why we can't do it. How do you help people kind of overcome that resistance? So, you know, that's just a belief thing, right? So it's like, for example, if I ever told you, if you've never ridden a bicycle or never knew how to swim, and if I show you this amazing tool, this thing called a bicycle, which runs on these two gyroscopes, and you're supposed to do this, uh, you know, magical act of balancing and riding it, you laugh at me and say, it's impossible, right? <laughs> but the moment, you know, you get some instructions, the first time you try it, you might wobble a little bit, second, third time. And I also call, you know, that you have those uh, training wheels. And so we yes. have certain things, you know, for example, meditation, commentaries, having the right environment, going to a retreat, for example. These are all training wheels that you can use to get you started to believe in yourself, after which you kind of take those away and you're off running. You don't really need, you don't have a dependency on those things. So that initial instruction is very important. It's like, you know, you're learning to play golf or, you know, or, or even, you know, doing a perfect stroke in swimming. 
if you get it right, then you just have to keep deepening your skills, keep practicing it till the point where you become very comfortable. Meditation becomes second nature to you and you don't have to really be even thinking and it'll become a daily practice as it is for me and for many of the people that I've uh, been working with for a long time now. So, so that's, I think, so the, getting instruction, that's one part. The second part is building time into your schedule. I think that's where, I'll tell you, one of the, mm. one of the ironies of the situation is that people who are even meditation instructors struggle with finding time. And to me, that's like, a, that's lame. That's pretty lame. Right? So oh, the irony. Practice what you preach. And you know, so I say that, you know, first thing in the morning, simple, first thing in the morning, when you wake up, your mind is already settled. It's already slow. You're not stimulated. You're not going to be thinking about a hundred different things. Great starting point. Sit down, use that time to nurture your thought process, create a high consciousness, and then it's like breakfast for the soul, right? Yeah. That the rest of the day is going to feed off of that energy that you kickstarted yourself with. Yeah. Second time, evening, come back from home, from work, settle down. If you had to go to the gym, hit the gym, come back, spend 20 minutes minimum wind down let you know kind of let all the stresses and the strains and all of the stuff that you've had to deal with during the day just give your brain a chance to vent them yes. such that the you know when you go to bed you read a book what have you you actually feel settled rather than regurgitating all of that stuff and sort of you know if you're never down housekeeping right if you're never taking the trash out of your you know, your uh, garbage can, how are you not going to, how's it not going to reek in the morning? It is going to reek in the morning, <laughs> right? So that's my analogy there. <laughs> First thing and last thing, I highly recommend anybody can do it, no excuses. Yeah, I love that. I, I even use a visualization technique sometimes where it's like I'm taking out the trash in my house and I visualize it that I'm like emptying all this crap that I don't need because um, you're absolutely right. How many times do you lay in bed tossing and turning with all these thoughts and they're like so overwhelming when you you can mindfully observe those thoughts in meditation and i think again there's so much more for people to explore and to learn and if this is something that interests you um jay has got some great talks on youtube about this and i encourage you to check it out but i definitely feel that you know when you talk about sitting for 20 minutes there's a lot of different techniques you can do, but perhaps the most powerful that everyone can do is just to observe your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And Jay, do you want to just briefly explain what that means for uh, listeners who don't, haven't heard that before? Right. So one of the things that I say to meditators, the beginning meditations especially, is that the idea of meditation is not to blank your mind. That's going to be an incredibly hard endeavor. Yeah. Um, and so what I say is that actually it's better if you accept the fact that the mind is going to keep working. It's going to keep cranking out thoughts. So what if you selected the thoughts that come out of the brain, right? So, mm -hmm. so selecting your thoughts and sequencing them is a great way to slow down. So for example, so let me just give you an, you know, one of my favorite, you talked about micro meditations way at the beginning of this talk. Yes. So I'll share with you one of my favorite micro meditations. So I ask people, I say, okay, why don't you just sit down and I want you to recall your favorite vacation. Mm. Just for a moment, go back in memory lane, whether it was last week, last year, from 25 years ago, just pick one particular vacation that you really enjoyed. Nice. Go back and relive it. So I want you to go walk into that space, feel it, see it around you, notice everything that's happening, and ask yourself, where were you? What were you doing there? What was happening around you? Who were you with? And finally, and most importantly, how did you feel being yes. in this situation? Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I tell you, in that 30 seconds, you'll notice your mood will shift. So really, how we are feeling is really a sum total of what's happening inside not what's happening outside. And the we have world, control. Yeah, the world and all of the wisdom outside of the education system will all tell you that what's happening outside is really what makes you feel the way you are. But I tell you, it's not. It's really what's happening inside that will be the basis of which what, ha what's, what will happen around you, right? Yeah. So it's from the inside out that, that we drive 
momentum and activity in, in, in uh, things in the world. And, you know, that's a scary proposition because it requires us to be accountable Absolutely. for our thoughts. But it's also a really liberating and empowering proposition, too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So no more of that victim, you know, victimization of, you know, say, I'm a you know, victim of circumstances that, you know, everything else is determining how I'm feeling. No, no, no. You have control. Like you said, it's deeply liberating because you know you can do something about it. Yes. And sometimes, I, you know, the only they say the only way out is through in the sense of we want to escape. You know, we're in pain. We want to escape. We want to use drugs or alcohol or substances or distractions or sex or shopping or whatever to try to fill that emptiness or try to correct that bad feeling. But actually, if we go within and we just sit with the feeling, it it actually will solve it faster and in a more, you know, a, a more soothing and appropriate way than, you know, filling yourself with substances potentially. But anyway, I have so much more I want to say. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Jay, you've been such a great guest. Um, when we come back from the break, we're going to wrap up the show here on Lisa Planet Radio with Jay Chaudagam. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the future and how do we kind of find ourselves and also mention yoga and talk a little bit more about peace in the park. So stick with us and we will be right back to wrap up the show. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the com. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on Facebook. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pat. I am so thrilled. I've had the honor of working with Leslie Fontaine for the past year or so. And what she has created in her hit program, Sheer Alchemy, transcends what most of us get to listen to or hear in any point in time in our lives. But beyond that, Leslie is working with people all over the world and she has created something phenomenal based on the feedback and input from the Archangels, from the Ascended Masters, from the Light Beings, and most importantly, from each and every one of you. So if you want to change your life, if you're ready to step into your own version of Sheer Alchemy, please give Leslie a call at 678-665-3366. And why? Because this is what you're going to be prepared to do. Be amazed and on your part, connect with the Ascended Masters that are there to help you custom make the life that you are meant to live. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving, even in the face of adversity. Say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. 1230 WBLQ. Welcome back to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and I am here with Jay Chautagam talking about peace in the park, as well as inner peace, 
meditation, and so much more. Um, Jay, when we left off at the break, we were talking about people coming together and people learning these techniques that can help them uh, cope with reality, live healthier, happier, and more connected lives. And my question for you is, you know, where where's the future taking this movement? And how do you see peace in the park and and also practices like meditation and yoga and mindfulness kind of evolving? So absolutely. This is a great question. I think so. There is two parts to this. One is that what am I doing personally about it for myself? I think that's where it all starts. Right. Peace begins within me. Sure. And so be the change, as Mahatma Gandhi said about 60 years ago. I think that's the first step. I think, you know, if people um, are finding, and like I said earlier, it's not necessarily just meditation. It could be yoga. It could be through Tai Chi. It could be through art. But finding your method of slowing down, getting to that place where you're feeling absolutely at peace with yourself, and then asking yourself the question, what's really important to me? And I tell you, that question is so important today because if you haven't figured this out for yourself, the world is waiting to tell you what they think or what it mm. thinks, somebody else thinks, is the most important thing that you should be investing in, right? And then you live a life of, you know, purposelessness. And I have, I know so many people who've got everything physically, I mean, you know, materially, they've got everything and yet feel so empty. And I say, you know, what's the point? You work so hard. And at the end of the day, you, you know, you know, you have overdosing and you have abuse cases and then, you know, you have to go through therapy and so on and so forth. So, so, you know, so simple, you just spend time, 20 minutes a day, sit with yourself in, like I said, in any one of these modalities, and then, you know, ask yourself what's important. And I think that's, so that's a very uh, fundamental thing, I think, personally. But then the second part is, I tell you, I can't stress enough the need to find right company. I tell you, this has been my 20 years that I've been on the spiritual path. People finding your tribe has been one of the greatest gifts. It helps you to grow. It helps you to explore your own consciousness. It helps you to understand concepts that you thought was very fuzzy and, you know, un, you know, unexplainable stuff. And so finding people that to hang out with, even if it's, you know, even if it's once a week, you know, finding your sangha, finding your meditation group or, yoga club or book uh, reading, you know, group or, you know, any such thing I feel is, um, is also very important. And, you know, events like Peace in the Park help to facilitate the coming together of these tribes. And then, you know, you get to hang out with them. You don't feel so strange anymore. You know, you might have heard of people within your own family, you know, or your, even yourself, you know, you feel a certain thing, but then the people around you are so, they don't understand you. And that's okay. I mean, you know, it's, it's okay if the people around you don't understand, but then find that, that group of people, those friends that do understand, and then you'll see that you feel so um, nurtured and supported to go out and, and follow your calling, whatever yes. that means to you. This is really, I want to just interject really quickly and say that this is so important and that many times as we're kind of shifting in our own consciousness and awareness, people who know us from the past treat us like the old us. And then they get very, it's an expectation violation when we behave in a different way or when we care about different things in life. And I've learned in my life that holding on to those people out of loyalty or because it's your group, um, that actually blocks the space from your new kind of tribe to be able to enter the space. And sometimes you have to release yourself from relationships and situations that don't serve the person that you want to become. And it's very hard and it's very hard to, to have faith that if you, you know, sometimes you have no friends for a little while and then you stumble into the right group of people. And so I, I just wanted to say that. So, Oh, you just, you just said the story of my life in 20 seconds, just so you know. <laughs> Mine too. And, and I'll tell you, I've actually blogged about this. If anybody's interested, awesome. I say, your hierarchy of needs. If you just Google your hierarchy of needs and put J, if you can't, you can't remember my full name. And I wrote a whole thing. I said, you know how exactly like you just said, Kelly, how I grew up with certain people like my neighbors, my friends, my relatives, my cousins. And then there came a point where I didn't really, you know, and again, just lovely people, but I didn't really enjoy those conversations that I was used to having growing up. And then I said, what happened there? Right. 
And then I had to find a completely new tribe. And like you said, there was a point in, in time in between that limbo state where I didn't have friends and I felt very lonely, but I still held my course, so to speak. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to bite my lip and just keep going through because this is what I believe in. And lo and behold, here we are. I mean, you know, with a whole new different set of friends who are totally some people, people that I totally enjoy talking to and that really inspire me. And I come away from the conversations feeling so refreshed. So I agree with that. That's how I'm feeling today too, speaking with you, Jay. Um, thank, thank you. And I, I have to thank Julian Reyes at Keyframe Entertainment, too, for connecting us and really being in many ways facilitators of this tribe. Uh, Keyframe, they're a transformational media company, and they bring together some of the most amazing speakers and artists and multimedia, multi-platform artists and musicians and really bringing all of these people together. Um, so if you're looking for some really awesome transformational media, check out Keyframe. Um, but yes, and you know, Jay, it's, it can, I think the take home message here is that you're not alone. And if you're out here listening to this and you're all across, there's people all over the world listening to this show right now. And if you feel alone, like nobody understands you and like your friends, your family, they don't get it. Tr you have to have faith. Like there's many, many people out there who want to connect with you and you can use the web to find that community too. The web is here for you. Um, <laughs> so on that note, um, Jay, I'd love to know kind of some of your closing thoughts about where humanity is going with all of this. Do you think things are getting better? Well, that's for you to judge. I mean, it's going to be a different perspective. But <laughs> it, took us, it took us decades for us to prove to the certain people that global warming was a reality. So, you know, so there's going to be all kinds of opinions on that. But I'll just say... I think there's no question that we're sitting at a precipice, we're sitting at a cusp where there is a, you know, shift that is happening and it's a shift, you know, consciously. I think um, Stephen Hawking said that we're sitting at the, at the age of consciousness, you know, different ages all through history, but this is the leap of consciousness where I think that on one side, there is so much information, so much distraction but at the same time, there's we're sitting at an incredibly powerful time where we're able to broadcast with our message and we're able to connect with other people, just like, you know, what we're doing right now on this radio station, right? Absolutely. There's people all over the world, potentially, that will are either listening live or will be listening to it at some point when it's up as a podcast. Yes. So we have the ability to reach out to like-minded folks across the planet. And I say that whatever it is that is your true calling, find that and then find your tribe, keep nurturing, um, keep exploring that deeply and get together, put on things, share it with other people. The best way I tell you, I started when I was in UT, as I was mentioning, I became a teacher within, I think, six months of me even learning to meditate. And, <laughs> and it was because I didn't, we didn't have a meditation club back then. But what that has done in retrospect, it has helped me to move along. Because if I have to speak about stuff, I better be knowing for myself what I'm talking about, you know, so <laughs> have to explore it, you know. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> right. So, so I think that's just a great way, you know, share what you know and, you know, and uh, keep spreading the word and just keep doing good. That's all. That's all it takes. Little finger of cooperation and we'll make heaven on earth. Yes, I love that, Jay. Thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Enjoyed it, Kelly. Yeah, it's been great. And, you know, he's absolutely right. We look at the big picture. You know, we can't look at what the media tells us about where society is. We just have to look within. And if we're living good lives and if we're trying to stay free of all of this crazy, you know, political, religious dogma and put all of that aside and just love human beings for who they are as all of our brothers and sisters and just like have compassion and hold space and live good lives ourselves, take right action with ourselves, with right company, um, that that's all that really matters. Whatever's happening in the future or what everybody else is doing, like you said, we have control to the tips of our fingers, but that's enough. So that's a great, that's a very positive take home message. So Jay, thank you again for coming on the show and for sharing such great information. Um, and again, Peace in the Park is Saturday, September 17th. Is that right? That's absolutely right. So find us on Facebook, uh, Peace in the Park SF, Google us. We have a website, beautiful programming from talks to music, to meditation, to yoga, come find us at Golden Gate Park.
Perfect. And you can also, of course, tune into Lucid Planet Radio every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time and find out more, including listen to all of our podcasts for free on lucidplanetradio.com. And uh, before we go next week, I will be speaking to Alex Seymour, a.k.a. the Psychedelic Marine, who is here to talk to us about his transformational journey from Afghanistan to doing ayahuasca in the Amazon. So that's going to be rad. Stay with us for that. And in the meantime, thank you again to Jay and Julian at Keyframe and sending light and love. And I will see you next week. Take care. You've been listening to the hit show, Lucid Planet Radio, with renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff. Tune in each week as we illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. This hit show will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake up to the greatest version of yourself. Learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness as you explore the deeper knowledge, passion, and purpose within. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for upcoming show topics and to contact Dr. Kelly.